right, Valentine's Day is around the corner, and let's face it, people in love can be downright annoying. And that's why I invited my Down on Love panel of singles to weigh in on some trending topics. Please welcome Sex and the City writer and author, he, he's just not that into you, Liz Ticillo is here. NBC New York Live co-anchor Jackie Reed. And TV host and editor of AlwaysAList.com, John Murray is here. Hey. All right, guys. Okay, I was talking to Common about this new show, Sex Box, where people go into a box, soundproof. You can't see them. There is an audience, but yes. you know, they don't see them have sex, but they have sex. Yes. And they come out and, you know, they <laughs> talk about the issues and yeah. some therapists help them. Yes. yes. Liz, you're looking at me like, It's the most no. horrifying thing I've ever heard really? of in my life. Yes. What's the... What's... Samantha would have done this on Sex in the City. <laughs> no, sure, I don't even think Samantha would have done this. That's what I think. No, I don't think so. I think it's... Uh... I think, I mean, the idea that, you know, you're going to be so more open and willing to talk about your problems after you've had sex makes some type of sense, but on TV in front of a live audience is bananas. So no? you don't think you know? Well, I don't know. I don't I mean, if I'm gonna, give, go ahead. No, mm -hmm. no go finish, finish. I'm going to say, if I was going to try to talk about my issues with a, a man, I might not invite him onto a stage and have sex in a right. box. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's just crazy. Maybe not sex in a box. And I don't know. And, and I know they're saying that it's after sex that you're more willing to be more open right. and talk about things. But I would think that you can really gauge where a relationship is after a couple has had some kind of argument or disagreement. So what about sex, you know, at, at the breakfast table or sex, you know, while we're sitting in traffic <laughs> in a box? You know what I mean? Listen, Meredith, if you have to have sex in a box in front of strangers I'm... to figure out if your relationship is going to last, it's call over. Judge Maybelline from a go on divorce court because it's over. <laughs> it's a done deal. I agree. And here's the thing. The idea that you have better conversation uh, after a sexual or doing a sexual experience... After. No, it's, it doesn't make sense. Because here's the thing. I'm going to tell you anything after sex to get you to do that act again. <laughs> yes, baby, I'm going to mow the lawn. Yes, baby, I'll buy the engagement ring. Yes, baby, I'll wash the dishes. Because we're in the moment. That's pillow talk. I'm whispering sweet nothings to you. And everything is better after sex. Everything, everything is better Everything after looks sex. better. Everybody right. has so on rose colored you, okay, glasses. Okay, so those rosy glasses, the next day you'll be right back to the same problem. Yes. All right. I'm all not right. going the lawn, I'm not washing the dishes, I'm not buying the ring. All right, all right, let's move on. <laughs> None of these people will be in a box soon having sex. No, all right. bad idea. Next topic. Two co-workers in New Zealand, this is true, recently caught having an affair when pubgoers saw them having sex through a window across the street in an office building and posted pictures on Twitter. Now, this is obvious. I know people are in shock. It's true. This is obviously an extreme example of an office romance, but is it okay <laughs> to date a co-worker? John. Well, listen, okay, so I don't really believe in fraternizing in the workplace because when the relationship goes bad, there's drama at work. It can get a little murky. It, it, well, a lot of businesses don't even allow it. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. And they shouldn't because they can end up, I mean, if you're dating your boss or something like that, you can end up in a sexual harassment type situation depending on who you choose. It's never a good idea. But it did work for Barack and Michelle. Well, that's good that's example. Obama's true. who met at the office. Yeah. Now, my husband and I both met at CBS. I mean, we, but he was a producer. I was a reporter. I don't think I would have dated another reporter. Okay. I did some, maybe the same business, but a different kind of job. And you definitely so. shouldn't date your boss. That oh, I would no. say. You, you could just, not. you know, try to All find right. somebody that else okay. in bed. Yeah, All right. Exactly. Not a great idea. All right. Here's the next topic. A study found that 80% of online daters lie about their height, weight, or age. Yeah, I know. Why lie if the truth is going to come out anyway? That's yeah. what I don't understand. Jackie, what do you think? I think that people should tell the truth because it's going to come out in the wash. It always does. Like, come on. Do you just want to get picked and mm -hmm. then you don't worry about what happens after that? It doesn't make sense to me. Would you ever lie, Liz? I think you should lie. I just don't <laughs> lie. It's not in anybody's business how old I am. I don't know you guy in front of your car with your T-shirt. I don't know who you are. You, you know what? When you meet me, I'll tell you how old I am. That's <laughs> Listen, Anna, if you tell me you're 30 years old and I I find out you went to high school with Barbara Walters, you're a liar. <laughs> and, and here's the other thing. So, you know, and I, I, I love the fluffy girls, but I once went out with this girl and she wore this undergarment that they call a body magic. So when she had it on, she was shaped like Kim Kardashian. What's wrong with that? She took it off. I thought I was out with Ruben Stutter. It was a whole different experience. A whole different experience. Okay. <laughs> Certain things you should not lie I'm about. Okay. The truth. We got more of these bozos. Up next, we'll talk about one of my favorite shows, The Bad. Bachelor and the virgins on that show making headlines. We'll be back right after this. This is G.
We are back with John, Liz, and Jackie, our Down on Love singles, talking about what's making headlines in the dating world. You all know that I love The Bachelor. I'm embarrassed, but I do. This season, there's not one. There are two virgins in the house, self-proclaimed virgins, and the girls were very nervous about telling The Bachelor, but then they viewed it as an advantage, and it raises the question, John, if you were dating a woman and suddenly found out that she was a virgin, how would you feel about it? Well, being the good Christian man that I am, Meredith, yes. um, you know, it depends. I mean, like, every man wants to be with a virgin for the first time. Like, that's, it's, it's like a badge of honor. Why? But, but here's the thing. If really? you're going to, oh, my God, everyone wants to be somebody's first. That's a good time. But here's this, here's a woman the, doesn't. Here's, but here's the thing. If you're going to have a long-term relationship with a virgin, it depends on the level of her virginity, because there Wait, are. There's only one level. No, no, there, no, there are levels to this thing. There's the. Uh, no fridge kissing and dry humping version. She doesn't want to do anything because she doesn't want to get stirred up. And then there's the I'll do everything but the touchdown virgin. <laughs> so it depends on what kind of virgin well, you love. Which one do you Which one do well, you, you know, love? I prefer the everything but, but the, the touchdown. touchdown virgin. <laughs> At least we can keep each other occupied until we wait for the big day. Oh my God, oh Jackie. At what age does being a virgin become a burden? Do you think? I think for women, I think once you're past 30, I think you kind of feel funny. You may feel comfortable with it, but society is going to look at you funny. And once you get into your 40s, it's taboo. But for a man, I think once you're 21, you do not want to be a virgin anymore. I don't want anything to do with a virgin man. I now, don't know why? What I'm gonna Even do the with one that. that does everything up to the touchdown? Yeah. No, I want a man with. With experience. you know enough experience to kind of you know kind of run things in the bedroom. I can't wait to see you on he, Sunday. Listen, <laughs> I'm hypothetically, I'm hypothetically, say, I'm, I'm a grown woman. If I met a man who was a virgin, he's like a psychopath. I mean, I, who would be? I would be like, why? I mean, what are you? Are you a yeah. serial killer? I don't understand. No, I can't. Do you Sorry. remember your first virgin? <laughs> oh yes. You remember your first virgin? I, I won't say her name. No, because don't you say her name. No, no, no. But here's the thing. We 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 did it in her mom's house, oh, and that's there was lovely. this photo of Jesus on the wall. And when we finished, we were, we felt so. I said. Jesus has been watching us the whole time. <laughs> Real story. Real story. <laughs> I think we need to end this conversation. <laughs> Thank you guys so much Thank for your perspective. You. <laughs> Thanks to our single panel for being here. Our singles panel, actually. Touchdown. We'll be right back.